I think you need a little background not to get lost, and I will try to be brief. My parents got divorced when my brother, 36, and I, 34, were 5 and 3. We lived with her at first, since my dad thought it was the right thing to do, and she wanted to move closer to her family. Let me just say, it was a huge nightmare. She left us alone all the time, and locked. She would scream at us constantly, blame us for destroying her marriage, and say that I particularly was to blame because I was a girl and took my dad away. She is a total narcissist, and we hated it there. She would use the alimony and child support on her charities, family, and friends, and we would live almost in poverty because we didn't deserve it. The only time she put us on our best clothes was to go to church to show how good of a mother she was. Then, we went to live with my dad when he remarried and invited us to the wedding. I remember coming out of the plane and my dad being horrified at our clothes and looks and decided never to send us back. We had visited him before, but when our mother knew he was going to remarry, she lost it completely and neglected us even more. She has no way to fight him since she never truly worked and he told her he will give her alimony if she didn't fight. Her family is also all about appearances and saw it as us being horrible kids for leaving her. We were eight and six. The next years, we got a lot of therapy and our stepmom stood up for the challenge of two kids that were scared of so many things and we got the best education and living arrangements we could possibly imagine. We got along great with our step family and became happy involved kids. But to this day, my brother and I are very close. Then, when I was 10, my mother had another daughter with someone we never knew, but the guy wanted nothing to do with them, and she begged and cried to my dad to help her out, since he owed her for giving him kids and taking them away. My dad, the soft marshmallow he is, accepted and helped her out on the condition that she got a job, since he would stop sending her money when the mandatory alimony was over. My stepmom agreed because she truly pities her. We did visit our mother sometimes over the years, but it was not frequent. We didn't really want to, but our dad encouraged a little contact, but never pushed much. My brother visited a bit more, but he never truly clicked with anybody there. I visited three times from 10 to 18. Now, I am married and living far away from home. She was not invited to any event in my life, and I haven't talked to her in about 10 years. But through my brother, I know she has tried to get him to send her money, faked cancer, tried to tell him she was S, etc. I always thought he should go no contact, but he remains low contact. A month ago, my dad had a health scare, so we went to check on him. While we were in the hospital waiting room, she appeared with our half-sister, demanding to see my dad and to know if he would make it. I simply turned away, and she said that if he doesn't make it, we need to know how we would divide his assets. I didn't slap her because my brother contained me. She kept saying that my half-sister was his and that she will claim part of my dad's stuff. My brother explained to her that there was a will and that won't happen, but she said she had the birth certificate to prove she was also his child. Well, the kicker is that my dad got a vasectomy as soon as he divorced her, and even further, we were not even in the country when she could have gotten pregnant. I asked her to leave, and if she kept it up, she would regret it. Long story short, she kept it going. I hired a lawyer and a researcher. She committed fraud by putting my dad's name in the birth certificate. DNA was involved, and the half-sister says I destroyed her life because she didn't need to know her mother was a liar. I pressed charges against her for harassment, made a complaint on my dad's name for the fraud, and also requested a no-contact order. My brother thinks I went too far, says he is disappointed I let my anger win, and is very cold towards me. My dad, stepmother, and other relatives believed I did what I had to do to protect the family. My mother's family are harassing me, saying I will clearly go to hell for trying to damage my own mother, and since some of the charges will remain no matter if I take off my complaint or not, they are demanding I pay for her expenses, since she lost her job over this, and obviously has no savings. My brother, while cold, refuses to pay for her also. I wonder if he is right and I went too far, but more than anything, I wonder if by taking this action, I damage my relationship with him.
Better to have done it while your father is alive and can speak for himself than to wait until he passes and have to fight your mom over hearsay because she showed her true intentions by showing up with demands over his health scare. So imagine the chaos she would have caused later if not put in check now. If your brother can't understand you protecting your father when he couldn't protect himself the way he protected him when he couldn't protect himself, then you're going to have to wait for him to thaw. Don't you pay one penny for your mother's greed? And where were all her family's righteousness when your mother was being abusive and neglectful? When your brother becomes a father, he will learn the depths a father will go to protect his children. And if he's a good father, hopefully he will live long enough to see the depths his children go through to return his love. You did the right and only thing to be done. My husband and I are in our 30s. We have been married for 10 years and have twin sons together. My husband also has a daughter, 20. He doesn't speak to his daughter's mother anymore, and she hasn't been in either of our lives for a very long time. I helped raise my stepdaughter, and I love her, but she was an only child for a very long time, and my husband gave her the princess treatment. She had a tendency to act very spoiled when she was younger, but mostly grew out of that after moving out at 18. My husband and I both have well-paying full-time jobs, but I've been the primary breadwinner for the majority of our relationship. I also have a sizable inheritance from my grandfather, which we used to buy our home, pay for our son's daycare, etc. Last April, my daughter, SD, got engaged. My husband and I were both very happy for them, and for our wedding gift, we offered to help finance their wedding plans. They were supposed to get married this August, but the chosen venue told us they'd either have to reschedule to next year or change their guest list to less than 50, and that everyone would have to wear masks. The original wedding has 200 guests. SD asked if my husband and I could pay for a different venue she found that would be available in October. I already paid a very large non-refundable deposit for the original venue, plus extra for open bar services that would be provided. We told her no, she'd have to wait like the other brides who had to postpone for Corona, and waiting another year won't be so terrible. SD was furious and apparently very impatient to get married. Without consulting me or my husband first, she canceled the venue, caterer, florist, and photographer, all of which my husband and I paid the deposit on. I was sick of her little tantrum and told her she'd need to find someone else to help pay for what she wanted, because she wasn't going to get a penny from me unless it was for cab fare to the courthouse to elope, because that's the wedding she deserved for being ungrateful. She has since called her dad sobbing multiple times and apologizing and begging for a second chance. I called all the people she canceled and they were mostly understanding, and a few offered to renew the contracts SD terminated. I said no and have cut my losses on the issue, which my husband disagrees with and says I'm being too harsh. I told him I would no longer enable SD's bratty behavior and if he wanted to pay, he could use his own income. Mine paid for over 60% of the wedding costs. Husband thinks I'm being just as hard-headed and unreasonable as SD. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. If she took it upon herself to cancel everything OP paid deposits on because she was impatient, she can figure it out herself. OP was more than generous here, and it's probably time she learned that her actions have consequences. I have three kids. I had the first at 16, the second at 20, and I'm currently six months pregnant. When I went to university at 18, my oldest stayed with my ex-stepmother as I couldn't afford to take her with me. At university, I entered into a relationship that quickly became physically, emotionally, and financially abusive. I got pregnant. I ran to my ex-stepmother's house, and from there I dropped out, had the baby, and applied to a brand new university in a town three hours away, where I moved with both my kids, my ex-stepmother, and my brothers. My ex never even knew I was pregnant when I left him. My family knew who the father was. I was scared they would tell him, so I was completely honest, spelled out exactly how bad the abuse was and how scared I was for our kid. My family agreed it was for the best if my ex didn't know. I have spent years being incredibly careful about my online presence, my connections to my ex, and whatever else I could think of that could possibly link my ex to me. Then, three plus years ago, I was contacted by an official asking me to bring my son in for a DNA test for my ex. I then contacted my ex and he told me he knew about our son 
and was going to apply for custody. This was a worst case scenario, as 50-50 is the automatic split in my country, unless I could get him deemed unfit, but I had no solid proof of the abuse. X made me out to be a psycho who kidnapped his kid, using information that he should not have known about to make me look unstable, and it was only thanks to him threatening me in front of the legal team that I won. If not for that outburst, he would have gotten 50-50, or even majority, as I was living a few hours from him and he had been up to that point successfully painting me as an unstable kidnapper. It was only several weeks later when I commented to my sister that I don't know how he even found out about my son or the other things he should not have known about that she said she told him. Her reasoning? My son should know his father and he should be treated as innocent until proven guilty. I have not spoken to her since. She has apologized, both directly and through other people after I blocked her. But in the two years since then, I've gotten engaged and I'm pregnant again, and my sister is distraught at the knowledge that she won't be involved with my new baby or wedding. My remaining family, aunts, uncles, cousins, ex-stepmother, siblings, are trying to get me back in touch, saying enough time has passed for me to accept an apology and move on. While most of them are careful not to pressure me, saying the choice is mine, but this is their opinion. The rest are saying that I have to contact her and are even saying they'll cut me off unless I reach out to my sister. How do I make clear that I will not listen to any more of this and firmly state and enforce my boundaries regarding my sister without pushing my remaining family away in the process? If it were me, I would never be in touch with her again. No amount of time spent between what happened and now would be sufficient enough. Remind her that you were in danger, your child was in danger, and she actively helped your abuser abuse you again. Hell, who knows what he'll do to your child now. Keep that rope cut. Don't let her anywhere near you or your new child. She has shown her true colors and you have made it perfectly clear that she is not welcome in your life. Hell, if the rest of your family is siding with her, cut them off as well. If they condone what she did, they're just as bad and you just never saw it before. You need a fresh start, without the troubles and the stress of the past. You have to think about your new family now, and who that will consist of. Is it better to have a deep resentment and no trust with the family you were born into? Or is it better to have trust, love, and understanding from the family you make? About two years ago, my granny and I were talking about what she would like me to do when she died. Funeral arrangements, her will, etc. Granny told me that she would like to leave most of her things, small items, to me and to split up any cash between my brother and I. When we finally calculated the amount, well, it wasn't a whole lot, but it was something. And I just thought it would be better if we just gave that money to my brother's ex-girlfriend. Let's call her Daisy. So Daisy can get a car and make a down payment on a house, since my brother walked out on her and he doesn't help her with childcare or anything. Before we gave her the money, she was renting a room from a friend, without a car, and lived very far from us, so I couldn't be of much help to her. Granny thought it was a good idea, so we called Daisy and told her of our plan. She was grateful, and we did as planned. We got her a place near our home. Granny lives with me, and a car. Granny was happy she had her great grandkids near her, and I was able to babysit more often, and this allowed Daisy to study for her nursing degree full time. Now, a few nights ago, my brother reappeared after limited contact since the start of the pandemic. He often disappears. And he came to my home in the dead of night, real upset, and started shouting at me and saying I stole his money, manipulated and abused our granny into giving that money to his ex-girlfriend. I was genuinely surprised and shocked by his behavior. He then went to grandma's bedroom and woke her up, telling her that I was abusing her and brainwashing her into giving her money away. It got so bad, our neighbors called the police. But my brother left before they came. He came back the following day and told me that he spoke to Daisy's friend and she told him how Daisy could afford the car and house. He also told me it wasn't my place to worry about Daisy or his kids. Since then, I felt really bad about the whole thing, but my granny says I did nothing wrong by suggesting to her a different way to use her money and that I didn't steal her money or abuse her. But my brother is adamant I was an a-hole and that I should return to him his half of the money. My father also thinks I somehow manipulated my granny and that I am the a-hole. Granny can do whatever she wants with her money, 
Brother needs a newsflash that she's still alive, and her money is hers, not his. Not the a-hole. OP didn't make anyone do anything they didn't want to do. I found my engagement ring hidden in some winter stuff I was sorting through. It was still in the bag, with the receipt which I ended up looking at first, before I realized what it was. It was a whopping $8,000. Money we really don't come into, so it had clearly been something he saved for. He got laid off March because COVID. We've been fortunate enough to survive of my salary in CERB. My grandma died in January. I couldn't visit her as I didn't have the $2,000 for a plane ticket, as her health suddenly and rapidly declined out of nowhere, and we had not planned to visit until the summer. We usually do every second summer. I know I'm wrong for this, but after realizing that I looked at the receipt again and was shocked, it was dated only two weeks after the death of my grandma. I was very vocal and distraught that I could not visit her before her death, and he knows this comforting me as I called work every day looking for extra shifts to scrounge enough for a plane ticket and even applying to some second jobs. I did not manage to save enough to visit or even attend her funeral. It is something still deeply painful for me. I'm torn. It's his money and I don't want to control how he spends it, nor do I want him to feel like he has to bail me out every time I want something. I didn't ask him for money, nor did he offer. On the other hand, We've been together eight years and have a child. He's met my grandma many times and knows how close we are. She was not a distant relative. There wasn't a day we didn't call even to just say I love you, and he was very aware of this. I'm hurt that he prioritized an engagement ring that he's been hiding since February over giving me a chance to say goodbye to one of the most important people in my life. Am I the a-hole for this? I don't want to bring it up because I feel so entitled even thinking about it, but it's tearing me up that he had the money to let me say goodbye and chose the ring instead. Why didn't you ask him for the money when you were desperate and didn't know if he could have helped? That's the part I'm stuck on, and makes me wonder if he wasn't getting mixed messages. I'm leaning not the a-hole, but asking was such an obvious path, arguably more than trying to get a second job.